People who are criticizing this don't understand hockey. I think people that are praising it don't understand math. No bias. You will respect my authority. No pulled punches. Your wife cheated on you because you lost sight of who you are as a man, as a husband. No agenda. There is no fear in this dojo. This is no hyperbole. This is the best part of the week. Here's the maestro, Mike Baum. I am the smartest man alive. All right, here we go. It's back. Number five. What's the point? Someone's got to explain this to me. And I'm talking about John Hines and the Minnesota Wild and this Mm. great new trend to pull the goalie in overtime. Now, Minnesota's been in desperation mode much of the season to try to make the playoffs. On March 10th against the Predators, one of the teams they were chasing in the wild card hunt, in overtime, Hines pulled his goalie and scored, earning the two points. The catch to this whole thing is there is a rule in the NHL that if you pull your goalie in overtime and the opposing team scores into the empty net, you don't even get the one point earned by forcing the extra time. So it works there. And more famously, this last Saturday in a national TV game against the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Knights scored late to send the game to overtime 1-1. And once again, Hines pulled the goalie, creating a four-on-three, this time off a rebound and one pass. Marsha shows scores into the empty net, and the Knights win. Here's what I don't get. If you go to a shootout which they were 3-2 and two in shootouts so far in the Minnesota Wild this year. You have a chance to earn the two points to the opponent's one whom you are chasing in the wild card. If you score the goal and win, you get two points as well to the opponent's one. But if they score into the empty net, you get none. The yes. math doesn't add up here to me. So you've been successful and unsuccessful, and you got two points and zero points, which is the same as if you would have lost two shootouts. You're much better off just to have gone to the shootout both times. But yet I see this in article after article and after article praised. People who are criticizing this don't understand hockey. I think people that are praising it don't understand math. All right, now the next four are all out of the women's tournament. I did a no hyperbole a couple years ago, Mitch and Paul. I think it was about the Polish swimming team (laughs) when they went to the Olympics and everything that went wrong with it. This seems to be this women's tournament. And I say this because this is the height of women's basketball in terms of popularity and viewing, in terms of the betting handle, and yet all these things still go wrong. It reminds me of the 30 for 30 about the USFL, small potatoes, Donald Trump called it. You've got to get out of this mentality. Let's start with all the hijinks. Let's start at number four. It was all a dream about Tennessee. We go back to a first-round matchup with the Final Four qualifier, NC State, as we had just talked about in the previous segment, taking on Chattanooga in the first round on their home court in Raleigh. At halftime of the game, official Tommy Paris, who's a lady, was removed from the game. There she is in the picture. And replaced with the official who had just done the Tennessee game before, took place in the second half. The NCAA announced it was because she was disqualified for a background violation. Well, what was the background violation? Well, she got her master's degree from Chattanooga which she didn't reveal on her questionnaire. And the NCAA didn't discover this till during the first half of the game that she got her master's degree from Chattanooga. NCAA official was asked by a reporter, does the NCAA simply not have enough funds to investigate this? Because he kept saying, we can only go on what they write on the form. And he said, well, I'm not going down that road. I don't know where you're going to go. This is talking about a tournament here. You know what that is? I could Google that and find out that she went to the university. She went to Chattanooga. How much funds does that take? Half time of the game? Small potatoes. All right. Now let's go to number three. By the time I get to Spokane, an ugly incident in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, with the University of Utah women's team, who's playing in the first and second rounds in Spokane because Gonzaga was the four seed, and the top four seeds in each region host their home games on their home court. They are staying in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, 35 miles from Spokane. This has been verified by people that had phones and Facebook posts that the team, while out to dinner in Coeur d'Alene, were hurled racial epithets at, the N-word to be specific, on three different occasions by people gunning their car or truck and then shouting these words at the team, which is a mixed-race team of white, Latino, and black. What an ugly incident. But they were one of three teams staying in Coeur d'Alene, and I said to them, I said, why the hell are they staying 45 minutes from the arena where they're playing? Well, there are no hotel rooms because the men's first two rounds were also in Spokane. 
So there was no hotel room. Can you try not to have in the same city, the regional or the, the, the rounds games where nobody can get and in a town where you don't have enough hotel rooms to host eight teams? Come on, figure this out. Either, either Gonzaga's got to be a five seed or you've got to move it off of that region. That That's very poor planning on the women's part and a very poor, unfortunate incident for the University of Utah's team and, and for that entire region and the bad actors there. All right, let's go to number two, ring around the nosy. <laughs> this involves a nose ring. Oh, God. Notre Dame freshman All-American guard Hannah Hidalgo has a nose ring. She has worn this nose ring in every game the Fighting Irish have played this year, including the first two rounds of the tournament. Now they get to the Sweet 16 yeah. game. Before the game, the referee says you have to put a piece of tape over it. They don't want any jewelry showing now at this point in the tournament. Then at the end of the first quarter, they came to her and said, no, you have to take it out. NCAA, if you were going to enforce this jewelry rule, why would you have started in round one of the tournament? You don't wait till you get to the regionals, or you don't wait to get the final four and change the rules. Look at this picture. Here's the training staff with the pliers on the bench trying to get this nose ring out. She missed almost five minutes of the second quarter trying to get this out. In the meantime, they get upset, upset by Oregon State and knocked out of the tournament. And then number one, the Ark of the Broken Covenant. <laughs> Let's go to Moda Center in Portland. Oh, no. They played four games in the Sweet 16 before they noticed that the three-point line was two, six inches too short at the top of the key on one end of the court. This is before the Texas NC State uh, Regional Final on Sunday afternoon on ABC when they're out there doing shoot-arounds and the coaches notice one seems to be longer than the other. Here's the two coaches walking it off foot by foot to determine. Then they came out and they measured it and they said, oh yes, it's six inches inches too short. NCAA uh, women's committee person, head Lynn Holzman, said it's unfortunate that the vendor got it wrong. Oh. Connor Sports makes all the March Madness courts for the NCAA and it put the tape down too short on one end. We're going to go back and discover how this happened and check going forward to make sure all the lines are correct. Court marking, she said. So now they present it to the two coaches. What do you want to do? We can fix it, but it's going to take at least an hour, and the game will have to be moved off ABC. ABC cannot hold the programming. The two coaches got together and said, it's more important to the women's game to keep it on ABC. We played on the court already before, and we won on the court. And so they went ahead and played the game, and NC State wire to wire pretty easily. It's interesting do you think they would shoot better from the shorter? No. Much worse, and probably it's because, you know, you have a muscle memory of what it's supposed to be. Three-point shooting was only 25% on the end of the court where it was six inches short, 33% on the end that had the right lines. The women's tournament has to bring themselves up to the level that it deserves to be now. Our former CE, COO, Dave Tuttle, used to say, you are what you think you are. If you're, you think that you're the two rundown casinos at the end of the street, you're right. But if you think you're an up-and-coming company bought by Derek Steven who's going to be the best downtown and maybe the best in the city, you're also right. You are what you think you are, and that's no hyperbole. There you go. Well done.